<laughs> and we've got the perennial arcade favorite, Air Hockey. Now this is the most complicated of all the builds because if you look closely here at the top, there's a hole in the bag for a camera to look out through. Then stripping away the backpack, you can see that camera connects to the brains and in this case, it's a Raspberry Pi, which is basically like a mini computer instead of just an Arduino microcontroller like all the other builds have used so far. Can I have the I know. Bud, 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 back I was eating lunch with some coworkers and we were debating about just how far you would sink if you jumped into a pool of these water balls. For example, would it go up to your calf or to like your waist or all the way above your head? Everyone seemed to have a different theory. I saw this video on Twitter with over 5 million views and then again on YouTube with nearly 1 million views. Basically this guy modified his cell phone case with propellers to take selfies, which is awesome. My only issue with it is that it's not only fake, but it's a scam, which I'll explain in a minute. But as for it being fake, the first clue is that these are 3 volt 7 millimeter micro brush motors like you see here. I'd say uh, steel and cement are now the two that, that I'm still scratching my head. Well, if anyone's gonna be scratching their head to solve the problem, I think humanity is grateful. Bill Gates is the one doing it. So on behalf of, I don't know, the world, we appreciate the efforts you're making in this. I have some celebratory pizza rolls last year. Uh -oh. you, actually, they're frozen, you know what? Uh-oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's just a prop, I'll spare you. This bowling ball can get you a strike every time because after you bowl it, you simply lean in the direction you want the ball to turn. This idea has been on my bucket list for over three years, so today I'm gonna tell you how we made it, how exactly it works, and what happens when you take it bowling, but neglect to tell the people you're bowling with about your slight advantage. all around the world. But first, to demonstrate this isn't some kind of smoke and mirrors trick, I located the nastiest water I could find near my house and met up with some intrepid field scientists. Today I'm joined by my friends Cole, Kate, and Rainey, and Max. I promised them they could be in a video, but I didn't tell them which one or what we'd be doing. And here's the deal, guys. We need to go into that pond that's all gross and nasty and fill it up with muddy water. Can you do that? Boost. Yeah, I don't do know what. Do you know what, my father's name? I don't know, but is your father proud of you? What you do? Does, does he think you work for Microsoft? Yes, of course. But you don't work for Microsoft. Did you tell him that? Will I tell you one more name? Yes. Sweeney. Yes. <laughs> At least talk to me. Hello. This is Matt Prater. He's the place kicker for the Detroit Lions. He holds the NFL record for the longest field goal ever, which means he's really good at kicking footballs. And this is a robot I made, which, not to brag, is also really good at kicking footballs. So to settle who's better between the two of us, we're going straight to Detroit. Mano a mano, man versus machine. So the next day, we deliver the package in an official looking vest. Have a good holiday. Thank you. And waited for the sweet retribution. Hello. You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more.
This is a specialized human-shaped shark cage I designed. And this is me in the middle of a shark feeding frenzy in that cage, which as it happens, doesn't actually keep the sharks out. They're in the freaking cage! But to understand how I ended up in the middle of the Bahamas with buckets of blood surrounded by a butt ton of sharks, we've got to go back exactly one year. Because that's when I ran a test to see what really happens if sharks smell a drop of human blood in the water. Two days, all of them could cruise through the first part of this course about this fast, and Fort Nuts was already feeling less and less secure. Fat Gus is like, wait, is this thing moving? I'm good. Here, Rick hypothesizes if he doesn't sit in the crate, it won't move. And here, he rejects that hypothesis with a legendary leap. And this is a totally different kind of reaction we discovered in all our experimentation called Devil's Toothpaste, which is insanely reactive and super dangerous. I'll explain why in a minute, but for now, here's a hint. And if you look closely in both shots, I'm not holding the trigger. This kid is. In fact, that kid was the whole reason we were there at all, because this was a culmination of... So I'm here today in Florida filming with Kevin, more commonly known as the Backyard Scientist. That's right. And today we're going to take these two live grenades and we're going to be dipping them in this tub of liquid nitrogen. So go ahead and hand them to me. And then, dude, baby alligator! One of my greatest ambitions in life is for my nephews to consider me their favorite uncle. No, I'm, I'm totally sort of kidding. Which is why today we've got a trampoline, a real nice high speed camera, and 1500 water balloons, including a couple really big ones. This guy took a package from my porch, and now he's about to open it in his car, but what he doesn't know is this is a custom-built bait package that is recording him on four different cameras, and it's about to unleash a pound of the world's finest glitter, along with some other surprises. But to understand how we got to this point, first, we need to rewind a bit. About seven months ago, I noticed a package being reported as delivered, but it never arrived, so when I checked our security cameras, I noticed this lovely couple out for a stroll. So clearly Matt had a deadly lock on any throwing game, but basketball is more my game. So to finish off the day, I decided I would bring his ego back into check. But as it turns out, if you are a world-class athlete in one sport, you are a really, really good athlete in all sports. So in conclusion, you should play the games if you think they're fun. Just know the odds are heavily stacked against you, so if you lose, it's NBD. Unlike this guy, who lost his entire life savings playing carnival games. And if you boards. Again, we place the control in the middle. The board over here would pump the human blood slowly at one drop a minute, and then on the other side, this board would pump the blood fast, on average, one drop every four seconds. We were able to do that because another cool feature for the boxes we built was that by turning this knob, you can control the flow rate, so over time, they can pump out different amounts. And because sometimes we all have to step up and just do our part, while Luke once again risked his life by placing the three boards, I prepared to push a button. In science, this is known as a fluidized bed. It's used in industrial applications such as powder coat painting or in grain silos to make sure that the grain flows smoothly to the outlet. With air on, all the other obstacles so far, after a day or two, they'd mastered it. In this case, even disregarding her offering of a fresh walnut. 
Now on to the slinky bridge of deception, and this was the sleeper obstacle in my book. That is not a large gap, which they can easily jump, but having the slinky there just threw them off somehow. You can see how much Frank is struggling here, and he's the brave one. This is the world's first ever actual pool of jello. And while it may look simple, it's actually a very difficult engineering challenge to pull off. As proof, if you Google Jello Pool, you will either find bad CGI or a handful of videos of people who tried to do this, but it really didn't work out. So today, we're gonna answer possibly the longest standing question from my childhood what would it be like to actually belly flop in a pool of Jello? Definitely heavy. Oh my gosh. What the heck? <laughs> it looks like a pill. Oh my right? gosh, what the? You want to know how I did it? How? So I'm going to make a video about this, right? In a couple weeks, I'm going to put it on YouTube and watch the video and then you'll see how I did it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 